Okay, hello everyone. So my name is Sara Jungblad and I work at the Mobile Life here in uh, Stockholm. And I have a PhD in human-computer interaction or human-machine interaction. And today I'm going to talk about inspiration for interaction design through the team of copy and, and paste. There. Okay, so this is the office at Mobile Life. And as you can see that there's a lot of computers sitting on the desks, so-called information technology, and people are interacting with these by sitting on chairs and writing. But this is not what I consider mobile life to be about. So what is mobile life? Well, is it this? Working from anywhere at any time, maybe? Like here, sitting at a cafe, enjoying a nice coffee and so on? No, actually, life is about much more than work. And what we're trying to do is to learn about how we can take inspiration from everyday life and the kind of values and things that you find there and use that when you design information technology. So where can we take inspiration? Maybe a few people are enjoying something that a lot of other people also could be enjoying. And maybe a few people are valuing something that other people also could be valuing. And maybe a few people are exemplifying this in a practice that we could take inspiration from. And now I'm going to tell you a story about something that I've been inspired from. And this is a, a practice called nomography. And what it contains of is that there are uh, people that are practicing uh, uh, photography, like this analog kind of photography. Uh, and they bring their cameras with them everywhere they go. And they uh, use this and they kind of shoot from the hip. So you do like that instead of kind of looking through the viewfinder. And the cameras have all these kind of optical defects. Uh, so they are a bit dark in the corners, for example. But these photographers also have um, specific effects. So for example, uh, they have this color color splash camera, which creates like a, a yellowish uh, flash. Uh, and here you have a, a camera with four lenses. So this is actually one picture of that. And this is actually fun because the, the lenses open at different times. So this was originally from China, intended as a golfing camera, where you would, you know, see the swing. <laughs> so, uh, so overall, they have these, uh, yeah variety of different cameras. Then they also have some rules. So you take your camera with you everywhere. Uh, it shouldn't interfere with the life, but it should be part of it. You use it day and night. You try to get close and you, you don't think. You kind of just shoot. You're fast and actually you don't worry about any rules. You just do this. So how have other interaction designers taken inspiration from this practice? So what I've found is that some have actually looked into what their artifacts looks like. So what do you do? Well, you can actually just copy these artifacts. And what do you paste it in? Well, if you're an interaction designer today, you might paste it into something that is like this, like the iPhone, for example. So this is an application which is out there uh, called the Hipstamatic app and it's out on the market and I had nothing to do with this uh, but in fact it's digital photography has never looked so analog so what you get there you have can choose from different film rolls and you have these different cameras uh, and you get some special effects so and this is in fact is, is a lot of fun this application and in fact this really copy and pasting works quite well and I think it's part of the idea and the application as well so this is what you get when you kind of copy and paste the artifacts. And now I'm going to talk, to an, uh, talk about another approach, which I have tried. So, and that is about trying to copy the on underlying motivations and trying to see what the important qualities are in this kind of experience. So how do you copy something like that? Well, what we did was that we tried to we invited a few lomographers and talked to them about their practice. And they explained to us that it was about being in the moment. And they enjoyed this thing that you come physically closer. And also pictures can turn out bad. So it's not that you have these special effects that turn out great all the time. But it's actually a struggle. And you have to struggle to get great pictures. 
And you can't really control the camera so much because it has these optical effects and so on. And they like this thing that you don't really know how the pictures will, will turn out or so. Uh, and also it's actually good when something strange happens, for example, when you're developing these things. Uh, and you can also see this as a kind of a diary sometimes. You have it with you and then you shoot a little and so on. And then it's also this thing that this is a thing in itself. And maybe a few people don't really realize what the fun of this blurry picture is. But because this is different from something else, this is also part of the fun of being a nomographer. So how can you paste this into something? Well, we pasted this into a design process uh, of the context camera. So we tried to explore well, digital properties, for example, sound and motion and temperature, and you could imagine a, a variety of other kind of sensors, and how these could create visual effects in the moment. And then we tried to really use what we had learned from this practice in this design process. So, but then we eventually we also copied this into uh, a camera phone, just as the other <laughs> designers did. And in this, we also e explored different kinds of, of visual effects. So this is an effect where motion creates a trace. And then the color of the motion, or, or the color of the trace, is affected by the sound, the sound frequency. So you'll get different colors depending on the sound frequency. And here you have another picture where movement is zoomed in on. And then the sound level affects the, the transparency of, of the zoomed in image. So these are kind of showing you examples of, of the kind of visual effects that we were exploring. Here's another one where there's a wave and here's another one where the sound depends on the pixel size and then there's small white dots following the movement. So what did people say about this? Well, we let them try this in a, in a study. Uh, so we had people actually from the UK and Australia and Norway and so on that downloaded this to their own mobile phones. Um, and what they said was that much of the fun with context, context photography is that you're not in entire control over this. You don't know how the pictures will uh, turn out really and the situation will determine this. And if you don't do anything, then in fact, it's like a regular camera. It's a boring way to use the application. It's also a bad context photograph. So, and they also took pictures of things that they might never have taken pictures of before, like a passing car, for example. Uh, and here you can see someone is twisting a flower, and here someone is screaming, and so on. So it's a quite different way of taking pictures. So what the camera context camera is about is that it explores novel photography interaction and experiences. For example, so you can scream or sing or whatever and affect pictures like that. And it explores also the situated moments by using sensors. And it's about enhancing the situation. Uh, and the result is unpredictable and you're not in entire control. There are moments of surprise and you also have to spend some effort into doing this. So I think this exemplifies something that is about copying and pasting experiences. So what am I doing trying to, to tell you something about copying and pasting uh, and using this as an example? Well, I'm not trying to say that all humans should become some kind of lomographers. That's not the idea. Uh, I think there is a difference between a practice and the artifacts that it involves and that you can clearly see that in these two cases. And both can be great as inspiration. And there are also many everyday practices that are already considered meaningful by some that you could take inspiration from as an interaction designer. So this is, for example, pottering or gardening or saving Mother Earth or whatever. Uh, you can focus on these and then learn about the kind of values uh, and qualities and so on that the, those kinds of experiences involve. So I'm trying to understand how we can copy experiences found in practices and pay such qualities into interaction design. And also when to do this and why to do this. Life is about much more than work. Thank you so much for listening.